Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna to be talking about a recent purchase that I made, and that is a Harvest Right home freeze dryer. I decided to invest in a freeze dryer to add yet another uh, food preservation method, and I'll go into details on other reasons that I decided to go ahead and, and uh, purchase the unit. The Harvest Right home freeze dryers are a fairly significant investment on the front end. Uh, but over time, I think uh, the return on investment will be there. Again, I'll talk about that in another video. But I've had this unit for a couple of weeks now. I've done several batches. I've mostly been testing the capabilities of it and doing some test batches uh, to see what works and some things that may not work. One of the primary reasons, obviously, that I bought a freeze dryer is for uh, food preservation uh, in addition to my freezer, in addition to the canning, which uh, we've done some canning videos before, we've done the meat processing videos, but one just another option for both short-term and long-term shelf-stable uh, storage types. Anyway, I've done a couple of test batches today. Specifically, I wanna talk about uh, a couple of things. I just pulled this one out. So I've got some venison uh, bone stock here, and this is actually some that I did uh, for I think it was this was about a, a 12 hour stock and you can see it's a little bit lighter but I also did a 48 hour stock and this was a this is actually freeze dried stock I just uh, strained the stock out put it into uh, silicone molds and then freeze dried and it come that came out just like this so I'm real interested to see how this reconstitutes uh, the goal with this is to uh, have a chef's shelf stable I'll probably go ahead and grind it up and then just have something that I can add uh, specifically for flavor, reconstitute it, uh, rehydrate the meat with. The other thing that I have here is I had a pulled pork, smoked pulled pork uh, butt, and I went ahead and shredded it up and freeze dried it. I think it turned out pretty good. Finally, I've got a little bit of venison uh, steak here, and this is venison backstrap. So what I did with this, I cooked it sous vide. Now you can freeze dry raw meats, or you can freeze dry cooked meats and however you want to do it. Uh, I chose to go ahead and sous vide these and I did it at 131 degrees for six hours and then uh, pre-froze it and then freeze dried it and you can see it looks just like a regular piece of meat for the most part. I sous vide the whole loin and then uh, once it was done I sliced it up uh, to freeze dry it just so it would freeze dry a little more evenly and freeze dry better. Now so I'm curious to see how uh, these meats will will reconstitute, see how the texture will be, see if the flavor is retained. One of the biggest advantages of freeze drying is that you can, when you pull that moisture back in, you can add flavors to it. So I'm gonna actually try to reconstitute it in some of this bone stock. And uh, I've got a couple of pieces that I've set aside for that. So anyway, y'all stay with me and I'll see you back over in the kitchen. All right, so here I am back in the TBH test kitchen. And this is the exciting part. So we freeze dried our venison steaks. And so this is a backstrap and actually piece that I had broken apart. So what I did is I sous vide the whole, actually half a backstrap, so the whole kind of half a loin there. And then uh, I did it at 131 degrees for about six hours. So that gave me a medium rare. And then I sliced those up. We ate some of them that evening, seared them up, ate them. Uh, the other ones we didn't put any kind of sear on. There's no kind of seasoning on. And so I want to uh, kind of test them out just like they are and see if I can get the flavor uh, of the meat. And then what I also want to do is uh, I'm going to use these bricks. These are the frozen, frozen bricks that you saw that I had dehydrated. For this first test batch, I think what I want to do is I want to go ahead and get those going. Got the heat on. And I'm going to use a couple of blocks of this. I'm going to attempt to regulate this at a temperature. I don't want it to boil. Uh, I don't want this to cook any more than what it already was. It's already cooked. What I want to try to do is get this to a temperature of about 100 and kind of in that 130, 131 range. All I want to do is warm it through. I don't want to cook it any additional above that. I just wanted to make it uh, rehydrate. I want to make it palatable and then I want to taste it from there. So I'm not even sure if this whole thing is going to work, but we're going to test it out. So I'm going to see if I can get this temperature regulated and get it to stay at that kind of that 125, 130 degree range. And uh, then we'll open the packages up and start uh, the rehydration process, see how long it takes. And uh, we'll kind of do this experiment together. All right, so got my instant read thermometer here. We're at about 132, 126. So just kind of depending on where I measure it at, but that's kind of the range that we want to be in. So I went ahead and turned the heat off and I'm just gonna put, I'm gonna do one piece at a time. All right, so I'm gonna test this out. I'm gonna go ahead and stick that in there and I'm gonna just kind of monitor that 
flame, monitor the temperature on that thing and try to keep it in that 120 to 130 range. I don't want to get it above the medium rare that it is now. I've watched quite a few YouTube videos where people have freeze dried meat, some of it raw and some of it that they had grilled. I don't know that I've really seen anybody that has uh, sous vide their meat, uh, but one of the things that I've noticed on all of them, even the ones that did the raw, raw freeze drying, is they put it in the freeze dryer and I think they left uh, their drying temperature at 145 degrees. So what it does is it freezes it down to negative 40, it pressurizes it, and then it uh, you get the sublimation process, which I'm not gonna go into, um, but then it dries it for an extended period. And that the, the dryer basically goes up to 145 degrees. And so if you're drying it at 145 degrees, it's t essentially cooking that meat. So what I did when I freeze dried mine is I did it at 125 degrees, which is lower than the 131 degrees that I cooked it, of course. Uh, and it took a little bit longer. It took like 30 hours. And I'm not sure if it was the meat on the tray. I had several other, other things in there, but I'll do a test batch of just meat at some point. But I wanted to make sure that I never got above that 131 degree mark. And so I want to kind of control that here too, 123. So I'm just going to kind of keep regulating this and, and see if I can do this without cooking it any additional so we can maintain that medium rare, maintain the color in it. I don't know if it's possible to maintain the color, uh, but I wanna at least maintain the juiciness and the flavor. Probably gonna give it at least 15 minutes. The longer you can give the meat, the better. I wanna try this, like I say, at about that 15 minute mark, see how it does. All right, here we are right at 15 minutes, getting ready to hit the timer. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the lid. We've been maintaining anywhere from 125, well, we're down to one, well, 128 right there. 127 the outside of the meat temperature is about 122 right there let's see what happens when we flip it over yeah so we're at that 130 on the external side 131 which is exactly right where we want to be so i'm gonna go ahead and pull this out now at 15 minutes and then we'll kind of take a look comparison side by side so as you can see this is kind of what we're dealing with let me get that one out of the that's the hard freeze dried one and then that's the one that we've kind of got reconstituted. Um, let me slice into this and see what it looks like on the inside. Honestly, it's kind of an ashy gray color meat on the outside, um, but I'm guessing it's gonna be pretty flavorful still on the inside. Yeah, so even on the inside, that's actually not very appetizing looking. Kind of got a dark, I don't know if you can see that. Let me get the light adjusted a little better on that. And maybe you can see, zoom in. See kind of that line in there. And that may be just where it's not fully reconstituted yet. If I was gonna take a guess, I would say that that's not fully reconstituted and that line would probably go away if we left it in the water a little bit more. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take a taste test and, uh, and just see how it tastes. It's kind of cooled off a little bit. I'll be honest with you, that's got the feel of meat. Um, it's got the taste of meat. Now it does taste have the taste of unseasoned meat. Uh, got a little bit of that uh, bone broth that I brought into it, but I didn't season the meat at all when I put it in the sous vide bath. And of course I, see, I, I uh, seasoned what we ate that night, but the rest of it that I'd already sliced, I never did season it. So I think uh, with some normal seasoning, salt, pepper, that kind of thing. Uh, and that would probably be one thing that I wanna make sure that I do is get that crust on it, like I said before. Uh, I think that would be uh, really good. It, again, it did impart some of the flavor of that water and that's the beauty of doing the freeze dried is because you got all those open cells and so it really just sucks all that moisture and flavor that you wanna put into it. So I think either the uh, bone stock that I did or flavor the water uh, some and that's gonna be a little bit better. Uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and do another test with one of the other pieces. Go ahead and kind of do something similar, put it in there, and then we're gonna hit it on the, uh, on the griddle for just a little bit and sear it on both sides. So I think that would give it that extra pop, that extra uh, flavor that you expect from a steak. But I'm telling you, this tastes just like uh, venison should. And so uh, not bad at all. It would certainly be something I would take on a uh, camping trip. Uh, so I'm excited about this. I, I, I truly am really excited about the way that this turned out. Anyway, so I'm going to prepare the other stuff and I'll be back and show you kind of the seared 
um, version of this and kind of do some more experimenting and then I'll report back and let you know what works, kind of what didn't, uh, some things we might want to change on the next batch. Okay, so I got the other piece in there reconstituting, but I decided I'm gonna go ahead and, and just take this one little piece that we have here and just try, try to do a real quick sear on it. So I've got this, had this pan going for several minutes, uh, getting it extremely hot because I don't want to overcook it. I want to get a real quick cut crust on it. I put just a little bit of butter on it, sprinkled it with some uh, salt, pepper, and then a little bit of uh, Uncle Chris's gourmet seasoning. It's a very small bite, so I don't want to overdo it, but uh, let's see what this does here. So I'm just going to leave it a couple of seconds on each side to see if we can get a real quick uh, crust and sear on it. Yeah, so you can see you got a good sear on, on that side. We'll do the same thing on this side, kind of put it in a new spot. All right, so go ahead and pull that off, let it rest. I know there's not much to rest on. Again, we got a pretty good crust on there. You can see that. I think we're on autofocus. It keeps going to spot focus, but anyway, that's what we're looking at. That makes a big difference. So you get the, the char flavor, um, just like you would on a normal steak. But I'm telling you, that takes like a really good, normal venison steak. I'll be curious to see how it holds up. Supposedly holds up 20 plus years. Venison, of course, is lean, a lean meat, more lean than beef. And so you don't have the fat in there. Fat will go rancid after a long time. But I think being as lean as venison is, I think it makes it a great candidate for freeze drying. And I'm really excited. I thought that I would only be able to freeze dry meat and either ground meat or kind of small chunks that will rehydrate well. I'm telling you, after 15 minutes, that rehydrated fully. The beauty about meat is it's probably one of the easiest things to reconstitute in terms of knowing how much water to put into it because meat will only take in as much water as it can handle. It's not going to take on any more. So you, could, uh, you, you can't overwater it, basically. You can underwater it, of course, but um, I think if you uh, just put a little bit in there, seal it in, get all the air out of it, leave it in there, even at a campsite for 15 minutes. If you could throw it on the grill after that. Uh, I'm thinking of kayaking trips. You know, there've been several times where we've taken multi-day kayaking trips and just didn't have the ability to take steaks. You know, think of something about a Devil's River type trip where you're doing a multi-week thing. I think if you took freeze-dried steak, I would absolutely do this uh, one time. So I've got other things that I'm thinking of now that are going on in my brain. All right, so if you wanna check the link in the description to the Harvest Right freeze dryer that I'm using, again, I put the link in the, the description. I'll put a link in the comment section. So uh, that is an affiliate link. If you uh, so choose to buy from Harvest Right directly uh, it, through my affiliate link, then I'll get a, supposedly, I guess some kind of small commission, maybe enough to buy some Mylar bags or something. So anyway, appreciate uh, you watching this video. We'll look forward to seeing you on the next one.